To solve the question, what we need to do is draw a free body diagram illustrating the forces that are acting on the swing. Now, the question does note that the tension in each chain is 350 newtons. Notice there are two chains connected to this swing. So we're gonna draw two tension forces, one on the left side of the swing and one on the right side of the swing. We can label each one of those T for tension. And again, the value of tension, which we can write off on the side, is going to equal 350 newtons. Now, in addition, there is a child sitting on the swing, so the child's weight is going to be pressing down on the swing. And we're going to call that mg to represent the weight of the child pressing down. We can also notice that because we're ignoring the mass of the seat, we don't have to show a gravitational force pulling down on the seat itself. The only gravitational force will be the one exerted by the child's weight downward, which we again have labeled mg. Now, this swing is moving in a circular trajectory. So we know that because it's moving in a circle that the sum of the forces is going to equal the mass multiplied by the centripetal acceleration. It's basically a version of Newton's second law. Now, centripetal acceleration can be further expanded into the speed of the swing squared divided by the radius of the circular path. Now, as far as the radius is concerned, that is simply going to be the length of each of the chains. So we might write down here that the radius is equal to three meters. Now let's talk about the sum of the forces. We can arbitrarily assume that the upward direction is positive and the downward direction is negative. And therefore, if we look at our free body diagram, we're going to have a positive tension force plus another positive tension force and then minus the mg force and this is going to again equal this mass times speed squared divided by radius the left side of this equation can be simplified we can write it as 2t minus mg and then because we're trying to solve for the speed we can actually multiply both sides of this equation by the radius r that will allow it to cancel on the right hand side Next, we will divide both sides of the equation by the mass, m. This is the mass of the child. That'll cancel it on the right-hand side. And then finally, let us take the square root of both sides of the equation. That allows us to solve for the speed, v. And now we'll just plug in the known values. We didn't yet list the mass, m, but that was given in the question as 40 kilograms. So now we can go ahead and plug in all the known data. And once we simplify the left-hand side, we should get a speed of approximately 4.81 meters per second. So that is how fast the swing is moving at the bottom of its motion, and therefore that's how fast the child is also moving because the child is on the swing. So we can move on to part B, which asks us to compute the force exerted by the seat on the child at this lowest point. So now let's investigate the free body diagram of the child. We know, of course, the gravitational force pulls down on the child. So that's that mg force again. And then the child is sitting on a seat, and therefore the seat is exerting an upward normal force on the child. Our job is to calculate that upward normal force. And we can do that, of course, by once again saying that the sum of the forces is going to equal the mass times the centripetal acceleration. We will expand the centripetal acceleration into the v squared divided by r. The forces are twofold. We have the positive Fn, the normal force, minus mg. And then finally, to solve this for the normal force, we can come in here and just add mg to both sides of this equation. And then at that point, all you have to do is plug in the known data. If you want to make your life a little easier, you could actually factor the mass of the child out and that would leave you with the term v squared over r plus g. That wasn't necessary, but that could simplify the calculation. Let's go ahead and plug everything in. And when you do so, you should get exactly 700 newtons. So this would be the correct answer to part B.